so these networking events so I was I read an email yesterday with a fellow junk removal service right uh, another junk removal owner who, um, who honestly <clears throat> only does networking events he does networking events for around his city around his area his local area and he's always doing these networking events hoping that something comes out of them I, I guess honestly network events and I made some notes about this um, because this is something I was going to talk about last night, and I made notes, and then I said, you know what? Never mind. I'll just talk about it now. Networks events can be a waste of time because you can, you can't be sure that you'll meet the people that you most want to, that will be useful to you. There are other reasons why networking events uh, might not work for services. Okay. Good morning, Carlos. Good morning, Sean. What's up? One thing is that people. Number one, people are focused on their own agendas. They really don't care about your service junk removal. At narco networking events, uh, people are usually focused on their own personal agendas, such as signing new clients, crea creating brand awareness, creating awareness for their own business, or even developing just some kind of mutual beneficial relationship. Did you see what I said? Beneficial relationship. Uh, this can lead to, honestly, nothing unpredictable results nobody's gonna call you because of that you got to realize that a lot of people that go to these networking events are trying to get something think about it when you're a junk removal service you're going there with an agenda key to get business to get business what do you think they're doing what do you think they're doing right they're there to get business too that's it they're there to use you and you're there to use them I just see networking events as a way to give away coffee and cokes and cookies and waste time now I know that this guy um, who's a local guy here uh, Orson actually told me about him and him and Orson are really good friends they're like bed buddies told me about him I won't mention his name but he has a focus group right like uh, he goes to not a focus group a networking group and he does all his money he makes all his money on networking and I'm like going no, there's just no way. But now this guy is closing his doors. That means he's not going to be in business anymore. Uh, he's made up some excuse that he's sick. He's made up some excuse. What's up, Alex? What's up, Orson? Junk Pro Squad. What up? HD Green Solutions. What's up, guys? PEI. Um, so here's another one. You might not meet the people that are right for your business at these networking events. These probably people are bankers, right? I mean, you know, they're not related to what you you need. The people that you might not need might not be at the a right fit for your business. Uh, for example, these people uh, you need to meet don't attend networking events because they already they're already successful people, right? And they have already their own strong networks. They don't need to hear some chump go in there and talk about his new junk removal service that just opened locally. It just doesn't work like that. And number three, connections can appear fake. Hey, yeah, I'll give you a call. You give them your card and then they take your card and then they never call you. It's a natural at times and many people can notice that from another person people are like uh this guy how's he gonna help me you know the whole meeting is fake the whole atmosphere is not right you can feel that when connections are made without a certain goal that's when it works out that's when it works out when someone's honest with you you can tell that this person really needs your service you can tell that this person really needs you to make more money right so i remember um a while back and I'll give an example of this I was working for this real estate guy and he was making a lot of money he still calls me to this day I act like he's in past tense but honestly he still calls me and um, he talked to me and he we, we were I was doing a job for him and I had been doing this for three already what three or four times I had worked for this guy and he said man you should go to this networking event where a lot of people might use your service and I was just like yeah yeah you know what bro I, I'm I'm honestly I'm happy 
with just your business? He goes, well, I work with other roofers. I work with other remodelers. I work with other plumbers that honestly might need your, your service. And I'm like, you know what? And I told the guy, I said, hey, brother, I'll rely this on you. You should be the one spreading my word out. And honestly, I got another customer. Some guy called me and said, hey, I know Timothy and Timothy recommended you. And I was like, Timothy, Tim <gasps> my homeboy, you know what I mean? That, you know, helped me out. XG Consolation said, the smell of spring is upon us and the networking is definitely one of the ingredients to last a long term. You know, and, and it might work for Green Solutions. It might work for you, bro. But I don't know. And just junk removal overall, it just doesn't work right, man. It, it just never has worked properly for us, you know. Um, it is such a, a, a sneaky little, <laughs> you know, it, it just be seems like it's such a sneaky business you know what i mean you always got to check your email you always got to you know read your emails you always got to be the, that bridge builder between people now those are all the notes that i took in it but i'm always okay so let me tell you what happened one time okay this is a true story 100 percent uh this is my example of a meeting so one time me and my friend george who passed away recently of cancer um, me and him went to a coffee shop and when we pulled into the coffee shop I see one of our um, competitors one of our competitors is parked there and it was called let me tell you the name of the company it was called J Dog and we were in the Keller area I remember pulling in to this coffee shop and this coffee shop was a big coffee shop. They went out of business, by the way, uh, the coffee shop did. And behind the coffee shop, they had like a uh, meeting area. So we walk in and I see that the meeting area has like 25 people, 20 to 25 people, and there's somebody speaking there. And I see all these donuts and everything on the table. And I like kind of peek and I like peek. Well, this guy had set up a morning meeting uh, this J Dog guy had set up a morning meeting and invited all the local realtors to come in for coffee, croissants, and donuts, which was really cool. And I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I look over and I'm like, oh, dude. And then me and George started laughing. I, I don't know. Me and George kind of think the same. We're like, why does he have to give away so much stuff? If someone's going to use you, someone's going to use you. I don't think you have to force cookies and donuts upon somebody. I, I don't know. That's my opinion about this. That is my opinion. Y'all might work for y'all. But to me, I'm not going to spend money on something like this. I'm just not going to. I'd rather let the internet do the work for me. So I peek in there and I'm like, oh, this guy's giving away donuts. He's giving away croissants. And he didn't see me because he was at a bad angle. He was at a bad angle where I could see. But if I peeked up, I could see him and he could look over and see me. So I was just like, OK, well, anyway, guys, I recognize his face. I did recognize his face. Right. Well, let's go. A year passes by and I'm at the gas station uh, in the Keller area. And the guy stops me and he goes, hey, man, what's up? And I'm like, hey, do I know you? And he was like, hey, my name is what do you call it? I used to own a J-Dog franchise. And I said, oh, he goes, yeah, I used to own a J-Dog franchise. So well, what happened? He goes, well, I closed it down. They had too many fees, blah, blah. Yes, I am a cheapskate. You're right, James, you're right, 100%. And he started telling me about all this stuff, you know? And I said, well, what happened? He goes, well, you know, we, um, we spent, overspent, blah, blah, blah. He just spent a lot of money. And the fees were ridiculous for J-Dog. And I said, you know what, dude? I think I met you one time. Did I meet you at a networking event you were doing at a coffee shop? And he goes, yeah, that was me. Yeah, we used to do that once a month. And I was like, damn. So once a month, he was doing this free event. And I said, how well was that for you? He said, to be honest with you, I got one customer out of it. And they used me about once every six months. And I said, really? He goes, yeah. I said, what kind of job? Was it a big job? And he was like, yeah, it was like a $200, $300 job. And I was just thinking, huh, he's doing this thing, one, he's spending $100. I asked him how much he spent. He said he spent about $120 every time he set up one of these things. He rented the room for $35, bought the donuts for like $40, bucks, bought coffee, which was the most expensive thing. He told me it was like $50. Bucks. But he was always spending like $100 and something dollars for these little events and never got anywhere with them anywhere with them well of course they didn't get anywhere he would have stayed in business and he told me himself this is from experience that he thought it was a waste of time and he spent money on it i said which one was more important to you he said honestly dude it was a waste of time and i said why is that he goes because sometimes i'd be in there
speaking and stuff and my phone would go off and I don't know if it was a, a you know a spam call or a, honestly a customer calling me but there was one time where I was speaking and the phone went off four or five times and I was like whoa and I was like well you know that's when customers really call me too but you know just getting that information that he was telling me really sank in and I was just like ah, okay 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 you know and, and it kind of opened my eyes to these networking events didn't happen um, I know another guy in Fort Worth that uh, uses these networking events and don't work for him either I mean he's closing his doors now but I always think like this guys I always think like this the future of the innovation of technology is the internet of course AI of course generative AI and I'm leaning my business is living leaning towards the generative AI you know what I mean I I'm always leaning to those things instead of concentrating on door hangers networking events um, street signs which do work the signs on the street do work I'm always leaning towards things like that but uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not leaning towards things like that. I know a lot of people lean on these street signs. They do work, by the way. I don't do that. I let the internet do everything for me. Um, and as you can tell, I own a lot of websites. I built just a website the other day, uh, junkguysalito.com. That's www.junkguysalito.com. And I, I built one of the probably one of the most complex pr eviction process pages on the internet right now. I know it is. I know it is. And if you just see it and read it, it asks the questions that customers really want. And all that is the same kind of thing that generative AI is looking for. You know what I mean? They are looking for people to answer these questions and I answer these questions for them. I rely on websites, on social media to boost my business that's what i really rely on and i'm hoping other people do take it the same way and understand it that way okay guys i'm hoping that people don't waste um their time on networking events on you know door hangers and business cards oh jesus if i could tell you i don't have any business cards in anything i do if i could tell you that you would be surprised anyway um, and you're right. You're right. That's a great comment all around junk removal. Always provide good customer service. And, you know, I play around with all my customers all the time, so they love my attitude. They always think I'm funny, blah, 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 yada, yada. You know what I mean? That my attitude is great with them and stuff. But having a good attitude, you know, <clears throat> I do want to say something, kind of a side note off of this thing. And, and go back to that all around. Having a good attitude and being a good salesman is hard for a lot of people. Just being a good salesman is hard for a lot of people. Everybody that I know in Junk Removal are good workers. They are good workers. They can work good. They want to work. They want to provide for their families. They want to provide for their kids. They want to provide for their family, for their uh, wives. And there's a lot of people that work really good. But not everybody can be a good salesman. There are people that are horrible at selling. There are people that don't know how to talk to people and it's a communication skill and that's what a lot of people uh you know probably fell in business probably fell in business uh I, I could tell you this story in arlington texas that i came into arlington and i was at a and i've told this story before uh there was an illegal gambling hall it was an illegal gambling hall okay it was a warehouse of what it was and it was in Arlington Texas and uh, when I show up in my truck my f550 I show up by myself and I get out and at the place there was a junk King truck one junk King truck with three guys in it now I didn't know that until I got into the building I didn't know that three guys were in one truck inside the building there was two 1-800 junk trucks parked outside and one 1-800 junk car like a Integra or something with the logos 1-800 junk outside and I go inside the building I'm going okay you know these guys are in there they're gonna give them an expensive bid whatever 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 right I, you know what they, they the gambling hall they just called me it was an attorney who called me saw me probably in the in Google or something I have no idea how I didn't even ask the guy so I go in there, and I've never talked to him again, by the way. 
I go in there and I walk around and while I'm walking, the Junk King guys keep on seeing me. They're like, every time I walk by him, they, one of them keeps on mugging me, man. He was giving me a look like that. Now, again, I did not have my logo shirt on. I just went in there with my, my uh, you know, my uh, yellow shirt, whatever. I walk in there and I'm walking around and he keeps on mugging me and we keep on mugging. So then the guy, the attorney comes out, he goes, you can welcome my e-junk guy. And I'm like, I walk in, they're already in there looking, by the way, by the way, this, let's go back to the start. When I walk in, Junking is already looking at all. He's got a little clipboard. He's got a clipboard like this. And 1-800-JUNK has a clipboard and they got like six dudes in this place walking around. And they're walking around this gambling hall and they're just counting everything one by one by one. And I walk in there and I'm like, yeah, shit, I don't have a clipboard. I don't have anything. So I pull out my phone pretending like I'm doing something. You know, everybody else is doing something. I might as well. But I just start walking by and I start counting the uh, the uh, shelving, right? There was like 20 gambling machines, those ones in Vegas, you know, per, per aisle. There was a forklift. There was so much stuff in this thing. They were lined up. But maybe five to ten shelves something like that I don't remember now that I did like you know I don't remember and I just start walking by and I'm like going I go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I look over and the other ones look the same and I said 10 20 30 40 I started counting and I walk up to the guy and I said okay brother I'm done and he goes all right man before I had walked up to the attorney 1-800-JUNK had already walked up to the attorney and told him this because what happened was he gave us about 30 minutes to look at everything and then after the 30 minutes were done he came out right he came out and he goes all right guys i gotta run if you're done with your bidding come on out over here so we're like okay boom I'm, i was done a long time ago it took me like five minutes to even i was just walking around looking like i knew something right so i walk out, I walk out to the front and i'm like all right i said all right dude and 1-800-JUNK was in front of me he goes okay here's my car the attorney goes, okay, here's my card. He goes, we'll give you a bid in the next few days. And I'm like, I'm behind the line. I'm like, okay. Jim King goes up there. He goes, uh, here's my card. Um, and here's my uh, information. The attorney goes, yeah. He goes, he goes, we'll get it done to you by the end of the day. I say, oh, okay. And I'm like, okay. The guy walks up to me. He goes, hey, you're the junk guy, right? With the videos. And I say, yeah, that's me. He goes, he goes, all right, brother. Here's my card. He hands me his card. Uh, and here's your, uh, and and give me your email. And I said, well, I don't have an email. I'll just give it to you. He goes, okay. He goes, all right. And when do you think I can get your bid in in the next few days? And I said, no, I, I know how much it's going to be. He goes, you know how it's going to be? I said, yeah. I said, listen, man, I've been doing this for 16 years. I don't know about these guys in front of me, but I'm probably pretty sure I've been doing this. Everybody combined more than 16 years. Well, I, I think I said 14 years at it back then. Okay. And I said, I said, I know what it's gonna cost. And he goes, really? And I go, yes, sir, I can explain it to you. He goes, well, how much is it gonna cost me? I said, $31,000. He goes, $31,000. I said, yes, sir, because uh, you're gonna want to bring the price down to 30,000 and I'm gonna say yes. So the final price is probably gonna be 30. He goes, well, explain to me how you're gonna do it. I said, no problem. I'm gonna rent about four 40 yard dumpsters, hire about seven or eight crews. We're gonna come in there and start throwing every machine in there, every machine. Then we're gonna take those machines and get them recycled. And then, and every one of those machines, I'm gonna have a receipt and I'll bring that receipt to you saying that we lost, we uh, legally got rid of every one of these machines. And he's like, okay. And I said, and then I'm gonna have to pay each guy for two days straight. I'm gonna have to pay out about $1,000 to each, each of the whole crew, you know, 150 per guy, cause it's a lot of work. And we're, gonna, we're probably gonna use your forklift that you have back there and just move them in and dump them. He's like, okay. And then we'll use dollies and wheel out the other ones and just dump them in the dumpsters. After all this at what, $650 each dumpster, subtract this, it'll probably cost me about $4,500 to do a job like this. And I'm gonna pocket about, you know, 20 something thousand dollars. And the guy goes, and you have this all figured out. I said, sir, I've been doing this 16 years. And he goes, hmm, when can you start? And I told him, I said, when do you want me to? He goes, well, I'm back in town. He wasn't even from here. He was from Utah, remember that? And he said, I'm back in town on Monday. I said, then I'll see you Monday morning. He goes, okay, I'll be here around 12 noon. I said, I'll have my cruise and I showed up and everything. 
I had knocked that job out. Let me tell you why I knocked that job out, okay? There's two reasons. The price. The price was right, okay? Number two, I knew what the hell I was talking about. I knew exactly what I was talking about. I knew that this job was going to be this long, and I completed it in two days. Honestly, the first day we really knocked out most of it, about 80% of it. The last two, the last day was just like to give the guys extra money because I was just going to make a lot of money off this deal. And, you know, the thing about it, it was the salesmanship that really pushed, that really pushed why and how I got this job. It was my attitude, my ability to see something so big and so complex and and everything and, and give them a price so fast. Can you believe that this attorney, he was an estate attorney by the way, did not even, did not even look at 1-800-JUNKS or Junk King's estimate. He wanted to get this done. Now I did not know that he was from out of town, but I wanted to give him a price so that price he can sit on his head and know that I wasn't playing around, that I was serious about getting the job, you know what I mean? And that's what happened. That's what happened. I'm back, sorry about that. HD Green Solutions says, I'm not a huge fan of spending unnecessary money either. I mostly enjoy making professional relationships if it happens outside ex exclusive networking groups. Um, no, I totally understand. Here's another note. I do want to say a note. I was never hired again by this guy. Ever, ever again by this guy. I was never hired again. Uh, I remember him mailing me a check, uh, uh, overnighted me a uh, $30,000 check. It was 29 and some change. Because <laughs> we broke something. It doesn't matter. But it was $29,000 that he sent me a, a bill for, I mean, a, a check for, and I was like, holy cow, where do I cash this? Uh, I remember uh, I remember exactly what I did with that money. I gave it to my mom and I told her to deposit and give me cash later on when I needed it, because I didn't want to deposit that much money. I mean, that's why it's like IRS written all over it, right? And my mom's over 75, so she won't get in trouble. Anyway, I just remember stuff like that, but um, at the time, I think it was uh, a lot to do with the pricing, the ability to give a good, bid really quick to assess the situation really fast and, and that was it you know what I mean that was it James Whitmore says you always mention that when how much seal uh, and uh, that the wind and how much seals holy shit holy shit someone dropped something on this highway some big old log is on the highway. Thank God I looked up to see it, man. I avoided that bitch. Well, that diesel across me just hit, hit it. Thank you. Thank you, Texas legend. I like that clear junker wolf. You know, I'm here. Okay, so I wanted to announce something, too. So me and Orson. Orson, are you still there listening to this video? I want to I want to announce something really quick. Uh, Orson, hopefully Orson's still on this video right now. I'm going to wait until he says something or he's not even listening. I just can't believe him. We're going to work together. He, he doesn't even answer me. That son of a piece of crapper. You know. Anyway, here, here's what I wanted to say. Is that uh, in the next few weeks, uh, to all the local companies, this will really go. Uh, we're going to set up a, uh, a night that we can get as many local companies as we can. And we're going to rent out the uh, Roanoke... Uh, where they fire the bullets with paint. The paint. Paint. Oh my gosh, what is it called? Yeah, what is it called, Orson, that you wanted? To, we wanted to do, brother? We were gonna set it up. We just don't have the date for it. The guns, shooting the guns. Paintball. So we're, we're gonna set up a paintball. We're not thinking about it, we're gonna do it. A night that we can all get to together, all the junk removal companies, and set up a paintball night, or a paintball, uh, paintball night. Uh, and we're gonna uh, play uh, paintball that night. We're gonna probably have some pizza or whatever, but just to get everybody together, you know what I mean? And all the local companies that, uh, that are in junk removal, get them together and have a good time with them. Um, we're gonna set that up pretty soon. And then I'll announce it on my channel and whoever wants to go locally uh, can come. I know I want to go. I don't want to get shot, but I'll go. Uh, we'll have something like that too. That would be pretty cool. Second thing I want to announce is also is I'm going to have a video coming out in the next few weeks. Um, 
that's going to be really, really, really good, man. It's going to be a great video. Really talking about uh, my eviction process page on my website, junkguysalito.com, and just talk about the structure of the website. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're not going skydiving. We're just not going skydiving, Orson. Don't ever bring that up again. Ever. Ever. Okay? You know, Tampa is not winning. Tampa's not winning, bro. You're not local. Okay? You're not local. Loco. It's not loco. You know what I'm mean? saying? Anyway, guys, I hope this video really reaches out to you. Being a good salesman, knowing what you're talking about, having that confidence is really going to help you out long term. Okay? Really long term. Okay, guys? So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to everybody later on. All right. Thanks for having. Uh, we have like 28 people on this group. This is crazy. I'll talk to you later, guys. Have a great morning and happy hunting and jump from a while there. Bye bye.